Welcome to another video. You probably have seen this before. And for some of you, you've never seen this. The first time I came across this, I said, that's a lie, that's not true. But it is true. It is true for secant and cosine. I mean, for inverse secant and inverse cosine. You might be surprised that if you try it out for other inverse trig ratios like inverse cosecant and inverse sine or inverse cotangent and inverse tangent, you might find the same relationship happening. Maybe a little bit different or more complicated, but this is true. And that's what I want to show you. And it's a good tool to know in case you're solving trig equations or you're trying to do some integrals. It might come in handy someday, sometime. But it's always good to know your trig. Let's get into the video. So let's start with what we know. We want to show that the inverse secant of x is equal to the inverse cosine of 1 over x. Remember the basic relationship between secant and cosine is that one is the reciprocal of the other. But what we're saying is this equation says their respective arguments are reciprocals of each other. It tends to make sense, but if you don't know the tricks to follow, you might not be able to show it. So what I'm going to do is start from this side. You can start from here also, but let's choose this one. I'm going to say let y be equal to the inverse secant of x. So now x is bound, y is free. We're going to reverse the process. We're going to free this guy, do whatever we want to do with it, but this guy will be locked up. At the end of this transition, we're going to go free y again, and that's when we get our answer. So how do we free x? We take the secant of both sides to undo this. So we take the secant of y will be equal to the secant of inverse secant of x. And this generally releases our y to us. No, this is secant y will be equal to this x is released. So we know that secant y is equal to x. Huh, nice, which you can always get from here. But now, remember the mission is to show that this is equal to the cosine inverse, the inverse cosine of one over x. So let us um, look at this one. Look at the secant y. Remember secant is reciprocal of cosine. So we can write this as just one over cosine y is equal to x. That's all we're looking for. But let's just write cosine y. It means this is the reciprocal of this. We can write this as 1 over x. We can just move this one over here and release this guy, cosine y. So my new mission is to release y because I've achieved my aim of producing this. So tell me what the next move is going to be. What do you think I should do next? Remember, my mission is to release this guy. Yes, so I have to release this guy by taking the inverse cosine or the arc cosine of both sides. So I know that the inverse cosine of the cosine of y will be equal to the inverse cosine of 1 over x. But this guy will undo this guy and release my y to me. Remember, we were always looking for y equals the cosine inverse of 1 over x. But what did we say y was when we started? Inverse secant of x. So the inverse secant of x is equal to the inverse cosine of 1 over x. So this is true. Try to write this for cosecant and for sine. The inverse cosecant and inverse sine follow this process and see if you get the same thing. 
Do the same thing for tangent and see if you get the same thing. But whatever you do, never stop learning because those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.